This is the sixth video in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we will be looking at electroplating and purification, which follows on from the previous video on electrolysis. So in this video we will look at the purification of copper by electrolysis. We will look at how electroplating can be used to improve the appearance or resistance to corrosion of a substance. And we will look at how electrolysis can be used to commercially extract sodium and aluminium. As you should remember from C1, copper is a very, very unreactive metal. This means it can be obtained very easily from its ore by reduction with carbon. This means that we need to purify it further in order to use it for electrical conductors. We do this via electrolysis. The electrolysis of copper metal to purify it, we take our impure lump of crude copper, this is copper with impurities, which will then move through the solution in order to make pure copper, leaving us with the impurities at the bottom. In order to purify our copper, we need to have copper ions in our electrolyte solution. In this case, we will use copper sulfate, which will provide us with our Cu2 plus ions. So here we have our setup for our electrolysis. At the anode, the positive electrode, we have our lump of impure copper. At the cathode, the negative electrode, we have our strip of pure copper, a very, very thin strip, which we will then build up with the movement of the copper ions through the solution. When we turn on our electrical circuit, it causes the positive copper ions that are in the solution to move towards the negative electrode. When the copper ions reach the electrode, they gain two electrons each and become copper atoms that coat the electrode. They start to build up. As they have gained electrons, this is a reduction. This means that we can write a half equation for the reaction at the cathode. So the reaction at the cathode, we have Cu2 plus ions in the aqueous form that have gained two electrons to become Cu solid. This means that we will have a buildup of copper solid metal on the cathode. This makes the mass of the cathode increase. At the same time, there is an oxidation reaction going on at the anode. At the anode, copper atoms give up or lose two electrons each before entering the solution from the impure copper. Once again, we can write a half equation for what is happening at the anode. So at the anode, we have Cu, so copper atoms in the solid form, which are going to Cu2 plus ions in the aqueous form plus two electrons. This time, the electrons being given off, oxidation is loss. This means that there is a decrease in mass at the anode. The copper ions that have been released from the anode travel through the solution towards the cathode, towards the negative electrode, where they will be evolved back into copper atoms and start to coat the electrode. As the mass of the anode decreases, the impurities will start to be removed. These will fall to the bottom of the container and are known as sludge. Eventually, if the electrolysis is left to run long enough, all of the copper will move across and the positive electrode, the anode, will disappear. Leaving us with a very large cathode where all of the copper ions have covered it, as well as removing our impure copper anode, leaving just the impurities, the sludge, at the bottom of the container. Here we have our completed copper purification. We can see that the anode is no longer there. It has been fully dissolved and we are left solely with our pure copper cathode. 
a popular examination question looked at the changes in the masses of the anode and the cathode during electrolysis. In order to measure the change, we need to first measure the mass of both the anode and the cathode before electrolysis, carry the electrolysis out for 5 to 10 minutes, remove the electrodes and then dry them before measuring their mass again. As we have seen, the mass of the anode will decrease, whereas the mass of the cathode will increase. This is due to the copper ions having been lost by the anode and have been deposited onto the cathode. We have now looked at using electrolysis in order to purify a metal. We will now look at the other use of electrolysis that we need to know for Edexcel C3, which is electroplating. Electroplating refers to using electrolysis in order to coat the surface of a metal with another metal using electricity. So why might we want to put one metal over another metal? The most common use of this is in the form of protection. An example of this is in the use of spoons or cutlery. As you should be aware, many metals corrode, for example, iron rusts. Household objects like cutlery and cooking utensils are therefore electroplated with a different metal to coat them in order to stop them corroding. The metals that were used for protection are very unreactive and don't corrode easily, for example, nickel or silver. Our second reason for electroplating an object can be the aesthetics or for decoration. Here we have a copper plated wheel rim. It's been plated with copper in order for it to look nicer. This use of electroplating is often used in jewellery and decorative items where metals like gold or silver are used in order to plate things. It improves the appearance of the metals making them look shiny and attractive and in the case of gold plating can be used in order to increase the value of cheaper metals. Our final reason here for why we might electroplate an object is in order to change its properties. A common example of this is in the gold plating of HDMI cables or other electrical sound equipment. We do this in order to alter the properties of the metals. Gold is a fantastic conductor of electricity and therefore it increases the speed of the transfer of information into the HDMI cable. In order to electroplate an object, we place the object that we wish to be electroplated at the cathode. This will mean that the positive cations of the metal that we wish to plate the object with will move from the anode through the solution and be deposited on top of the object. In this case, we have an object, it could be copper for example, and we have our pure silver electrode. The silver ions will move through the solution, which also contains the silver ions, for example, silver nitrate, coating the metal here with our silver. Our half equations for this reaction. At the cathode, we would have Ag plus, plus E minus goes to Ag, and at the anode, we would have Ag goes to Ag plus plus E minus. An oxidization reaction at the anode and a reduction reaction at the cathode. This principle of electroplating was used to make the Olympic gold medals that were used at the 2012 London Olympic Games. As we can see from this information, the London Olympic gold medals were in fact 92% silver, 7% copper and contained only 1% gold. In order to do this, two different electroplating reactions must have been carried out. First of all, a chunk of silver would have been plated with copper 
and then the copper plated silver medal is plated again with the gold. This means that we only have a very, very thin layer of gold at the very, very top of the gold medal. This is done in order to increase the durability of the medal as well as most importantly to reduce the cost of making each individual medal. We will now look at a couple of examination style questions about electrolysis and electroplating. Here are two exam style questions about the topics of this video as well as the previous video on electrolysis. The first question, we have copper can be purified using electrolysis, using a pure copper cathode and an impure copper anode. This is what we looked at at the beginning of this video. Describe how the masses of the anode and cathode will change during the electrolysis. In our second question, we are given the symbol for a tin ion, which is Sn2+. Write a half equation to show what happens at the cathode when a steel object is electroplated with tin. So we're looking for the half equation for the reaction that happens at the cathode. I want you to pause the video at this point and then we will have a look through the answers. So for question one, where we were looking at the change in masses. The anode dissolves, the mass decreases, and we have our oxidization reaction. The copper ions move through the solution from the anode to the cathode, as they are cations. And then these ions are deposited onto the cathode, meaning its mass increases, and this is a reduction reaction. If you have written down the half equations to this question, then also credit these for your answer. In order to check the half equations, look back earlier in the video when we were looking at the purification of copper. The reaction at the cathode was Cu2 plus plus 2E minus goes to Cu, and the reaction at the anode is Cu goes to Cu2 plus plus 2E minus. In our second question, we were looking for the reaction happening at the cathode. So this will be our reduction. So we have our Sn2 plus in the aqueous form. This is our tin ion plus our 2E minus our two electrons goes to Sn in the solid form. This would mean that our steel object would have been electroplated with the tin. This concludes today's video, which was C3.6, where we looked at both the purification of metals using electrolysis as well as electroplating. We have now looked at all of the electrolytic processes involved in C3. In the next video, C3.7, we will look at how to calculate gas volumes using molar calculations.